Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something with something of my own. This is my game. And what I'm trying to do is dial in my screen. Right now it's better than it was. It's not terrible. You can see the lines are barely visible over here. It's, it's stretched. The screen is stretched. And I have moved the centering as far this way as I can. So it is centered this way as much as it's going to be. But I would like to shrink this down just a little bit more. Now let me show you the width cap. What I'm doing is I'm changing the width cap. And I'm going to use an example here. This is a GO7, which is what's in that monitor. And if we look at this GO7, the width cap is this guy right here which I have already replaced in that it was wider than it was let me show you it was to where you could not see these blue lines over here they were completely off the screen so someone who's playing this for the first time would not know that this is where the opening is right this is the cap that is in there from the factory and it is a 53 4 534 see that 534k that is a 0.53 microfarad cap I replaced that with this guy right here this is a point five six microfarad so I went up slightly and I actually measured both of them and and that one that I removed was actually 0.52 is what it was reading and this one was actually reading 0.57 that I put in my chassis this guy right here this is what I put in there so I went up slightly on the microfarads and it did shrink the screen slightly not a lot I don't want to make it too small I think that if I went the next common size up which is a 0.68 microfarad it would probably bring it in a little more than I want and that's a that's another 0.1 microfarads you know so I, right now I got 0.56 in there if I put in another 0.1, that's going to be 0.66. So it's a little over a 0.1, 0.12 added. And I want to go up in steps. Because I, I don't want to... I think I could actually shrink this pretty good, though. I think that if I did go with that 0.68, it would probably look just about perfect. So let's do that. I'm just going to go up to the next logical size which is 0.68 which is this guy right here 68 so we'll put this cap in there and that should shrink it to where I got the whole play field on the screen so I'll set up the camera and we'll get to the back of this thing and uh, get to work Okay, right now this thing is on and powered up. So, we will go ahead and turn it off. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug it from the wall. Okay. Grab your high voltage probe. If you don't have one of these I do have a link in the description this is kind of a must if you're working on this kind of stuff For safety and just proper clip it and then just go right underneath and you'll see it go and we're going right down to zero Just 
just hold it on there for a little bit and just make sure that we get all of the juice out of there, right? Okay, that's pretty good. I'd say we got it all, all the juice out of there. I'm gonna step in front of the camera a little bit and just kind of grab that. Okay. And put this thing aside for now. Just got to unhook the chassis. It's ground. And unhook our video. Okay. Unhook the chassis ground. Unhook the power. Okay. Remove the yoke connector. And then we're just going to get in your way and unscrew this thing. You got to remove the power to the degaussing circuit. And the tedious removing of these screws. There we go. There's one. And then kind of hold the chassis a little bit if you can and unscrew this. Like I said it's a, it's a touch bit tedious. Come on, come on out of there. There we go. Chassis is out. Now we'll take this over to the bench. Okay, so now we have chassis removed. turn on my iron I have my cap my cap that I'm going to use right here just make sure it's at least 200 volts this one says 250 that's fine and here is the cap where you can see I replaced it with this orange drop it was originally this guy right here so now I'm going to remove the orange drop and I'll just end up putting that right back where I had it. There we go. There's that. Remove the solder. Should be good. Put our new cap in there. This is a 0.68 microfarad. We're going up from <clears throat> 0.56 to 0.68. Okay. Just solder it in. Clip the leads. Okay. And now I will go over and reinstall this just how I took it out. I'm not going to bore you with that. And then I'll come back when it's all installed. Okay, we are completely hooked back up. Now one thing I do is I go 
back with my uh, high voltage probe. I put it back in there and I just touch it again to make sure that this thing didn't gain any charge back. Just to make sure that I'm not getting zapped. I don't like getting any kind of a zap. So we're all hooked back up. So we will go ahead and plug it back in. And go around front and fire it up. See how our screen looks. Well, it definitely brought it in more, but still, I mean, it still didn't bring it in a whole lot, but it is a lot better than it was. Before, the way it was, you could not even see these blue lines, so we could actually go with another we could go even smaller yeah but for right now i'm i'm cool with this now what i would do is add another 0.2 microfarads to that and you could you could on the bottom side of the board let me grab this like on the bottom side of the board you could take a 0.12 microfarad or something like that, 0.15 maybe even. I think 0.15 is a more common number. Yeah, 0.15. You take one of these guys right here, 0.15. Or, I don't think I have a high voltage cap for this, I don't. 0.33, I do have high voltage caps for this, I think. I don't know how high voltage these are. Probably not high enough. Anyway, I could take one of these and on the bottom side of the board, you could just solder it across that, across these two points. That would put those two caps in parallel with each other, which will just combine their capacitance. Capacitors in parallel, you add capacitance. Capacitors in series, you div it divides. It divides the two numbers and it will not be as big as the smallest number in the of value. So yeah, but I'm I'm pretty happy with this. It's a lot better. You can actually see what's going on over here um, I might be able to move the shroud a little bit a little bit over I don't know I think I just won't mess with it I, I think it's fine anyway that's how you do that in the future I may remove this again and put another one of those 1.5s on the bottom side of the board and that'll shrink it just slightly more. Or what I could do is buy a, whatever the next biggest size is, 0 0.82, 0 0.82 microfarad, a big high voltage 0.82 input in there. And that would really shrink it. That would probably do it better. So things to think about but that is how you do this on a G07 if, if your screen is too big like mine is but it's doable now it's it it's passable now I think you can actually see the borders whereas before you couldn't so yeah hope you learned something watching this video be careful if you are messing with monitors I would say if you don't have one of these, 
don't mess with monitors. If you don't have one of these high voltage probes, just don't do it. So if you do and you hurt yourself, it's not my fault. I do have links to this very high voltage probe in the description. They're not cheap, but they're worth every penny if you're working on this stuff. Okay? So, that'll do for this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, be careful working on this high voltage stuff. Don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. Do it at your own risk. And we'll see you on the next Classic Arcade Repair. Bye for now.